Alrighty guys, so I'm going to be doing a little bit of an update video here as to what's been going on lately and why I've been posting videos. Um, so as some of you know, uh, I think it was March 9th, we had a house fire. Uh, it started in the basement in my workshop. I was charging a LiPo battery and it uh, caught on fire. And uh, yeah, anyway, so it kind of destroyed some things. <laughs> And so I'm just going to make a quick update video. Uh, some of you guys have been asking how things are going on the house, um, what what plans are, what am I going to do, stuff like that. So, and then there's a lot of people that just don't know about it, and you know might find it informative and may also rethink on how they're charging live pose. So on March 9th, I went out and I flew my quadcopter. Um, I flew three batteries and. Uh, crashed a few times um, and uh, you know what you're doing when you're learning how to fly a quadcopter and then so it got dark so we went inside we're doing some things I went down put a battery on the charger and I don't remember I had two batteries that um, get out of your bug I had two batteries that were a little well the one I accidentally drew too much power from it one time and so it didn't keep a charge very well and then there was another one that I crashed with and, and it was holding a charge everything seemed to be fine so I don't remember if it was one of those and then the third battery was a brand new battery that I just bought and that was my first time flying with it so I don't know which battery I put in um, and I'm not saying it was the battery I'm saying it could have been charger it could have been I, I put the wrong setting in it, you know I had a headache that night so I wasn't really thinking clear so I could have put the wrong setting in. I don't know so anyways, I put it in, and I went upstairs, uh, went up to the main floor to my room, um, and laid down for a little bit. And it was probably about 30 minutes later or so. Uh, my dad had gone to fix the wood stove fire. We have an outdoor wood stove, and then my grandparents also have a wood stove, so he goes and fixes that one for them. And Mom was out in the living room. She heard a pop sound. She's like, and she was worried that maybe Dad threw a bag of trash or something in the fire, and no aerosol can or whatever blew up. So she stepped outside and realized that it wasn't him because he was down at my grandparents' place, which is right across the field from us. And so she knew it wasn't him. So she's like, huh, I wonder what that was. So when she came back in the house, she smelled smoke and um, seen a small puma smoke coming up the stairs from the basement. So uh, right away she yelled for my sisters to get out of the house and for me to get up. And when she said there's, a, there's something burning in the basement, I kind of had an idea what it was. Um, we'd also been having some issues with a electrical box downstairs uh, shorting out and everything and uh, we were in the process of maybe getting that fixed so we weren't sure if it was that or what so I ran downstairs quick and um, my workbench was um, had about a five five foot ring of fire on it within three minutes of it popping and so I tried getting it out. Um, I ran back upstairs, grabbed a bucket, filled it up with water, ran back downstairs and threw it on the fire, like in the general area. But by that time, it was already about the size of the table within six, seven, well, within six minutes. Um, if some of you guys don't know, fire can move really, really fast. And it, you know, you, you should get out. And I, um, I've been looking at joining the volunteer fire company, so I've been doing some training and stuff like that. So I knew... Once it got to a certain point, there was no way I was getting it out. And uh, another important lesson, guys, is always keep a fire extinguisher in your basement. I don't care what you're doing. Keep multiple fire extinguishers in your house, workshop, wherever. Because um, if I would have had a fire extinguisher, I probably could have put it out and everything would have been good. But it kind of... So by the time I backed out, of the, backed out of the basement, the smoke was about at head level. Um, we had like eight foot ceilings in the basement and the smoke was black. Um, I had a lot of uh, styrofoam and plastic stuff there uh, for building RC airplanes and uh, it was already catching some shelving on fire and there was a chair there that was on fire and stuff so I knew there wasn't no way I was getting it out. So and the smoke was getting really heavy and it was getting hot. So I backed out of the basement, shut the door to the basement which killed off oxygen for it which slowed it down a lot. I went and grabbed, went to my room, grabbed um, I'm diabetic, so I grabbed my diabetics, my diabetes stuff, uh, stuff that I needed for at least four or five days, and uh, then I grabbed my cell phone charger and stuff, grabbed my blanket, 
um, grabbed a pillow, grabbed some other things I needed there that I knew I need. I went out the back door. Um, by that time I could hear there was smoke coming up behind the sofa in the living room, which is right above where the fire was and there was an air vent there. So it already burnt through the air vent and was starting to smoke up through the basement there. Um, it was trying to suck air. I could hear it sucking air through some of the vents and everything. And uh, I know that that can get um, kind of dangerous sometimes because it'll go anywhere that air where it can get oxygen. But luckily there wasn't enough oxygen for it to continue burning. So I went out. By that time, uh, mom had already called 911 by the time I was down the steps. Like when she yelled, she was already dialing 911. So they were already on the way. She was grabbing what she needed to get out. My dad, she called, also called my grandparents, which is right down. Dad came up quick. He grabbed some stuff. Um, I mean, this is all still within eight minutes of it starting. And uh, he grabbed some stuff. He grabbed two of our guns. And uh, we moved the vehicles out of the driveway, took them out down in the driveway. My sisters were at our meeting spot. Um, it's always a good idea, especially if you have kids, to set up a meeting spot that if anything like that happens, you all go outside and you meet at one spot. So we met there again. Mom told the girls to go to my grandparents' place, so they walked right across the field. And um, by that time, my grandma had already called most of the family, and and, and uh, most of our family lives fairly close. Um, now we do live out in the country, so fire company takes about 25, a good 25 or more minutes for them to show up uh, with the trucks. There was our one neighbor is a volunteer fire company. So he came over right away. He helped dad get keys and stuff out of the door because by that time the smoke had filled the house and uh, it was getting pretty thick. So after I moved my truck down into the field, I walked back up to the front part of the house, which is where that general area is. And I looked in the basement window and most of my workshop, most of my corner was on fire. And I kind of figured at that point that I, it, I thought it was moving a lot faster than what it really was. Um, you know how things like that are time-wise. You just don't, you're not associated with time. Things either feel longer or they're going much quicker than it actually is um, one way or the other. And this way here, it just felt like forever. Um, you know, fire company wasn't getting there, which I completely understand there. These guys are volunteers. I am joined the volunteer fire company. I just joined the other day, um, which is something I've been wanting to do for a couple years now anyways. And... I mean, these guys got to climb out of bed. Some of them got to drive five, ten minutes to the fire station, grab the truck. Some of them go straight to the fire. You know, you're getting, it, it takes time. So I stood there and I actually started taking pictures because what else you do? Um, not much you can do. And so I was watching the fire there. It came up through the basement or up through the air duct and caught the sofa on fire, which is right above the, right above my workshop. And from there, it started burning up the side of the wall and stuff. And we had a cathedral ceiling in the living room and kitchen area. So it started going up that a little bit. But by that time, the fire company had gotten there. They um, were very efficient in putting it out. Uh, the guys in our area, they they know what they're doing. They can they, they do a really good job. Um, I've gone to several scenes where they have done stuff. And for the most part, they're, they're trained. They know what they're doing. And so they... They got out, so um, I'd actually, like two weeks before this happened, I'd actually went up to the firehouse to join, and so I had all the paperwork and stuff, so I'd actually talked to the chief and everything. Well, chief got there, so I went up and talked to him a little bit, and uh, he noticed that my lips were all black, um, which means I inhaled some smoke. So I went and got checked out by the paramedics, and they said I was good to go, just needed to get cleaned up a little bit. And so by the time, they pretty much kind of had it out. Of course, you know, they have to do overhaul. And I got an airplane above me, but they have to do the overhaul and everything, make sure it's completely out. So I stuck around there for a little bit, talked to some of the guys there I knew in the fire company. Um, we have some friends on it and stuff. And so once the fire was out and they cooled it down, um, they said we can go in and get some stuff. By that time, my aunt was there because she lives right down the road from us. My uncle gotten my one uncle had gotten there. He came from his house. My cousin was there. Um, he they came. Uh, they actually had a uh, trailer hooked up to his pickup truck with a with a skidder on the back, and they made it there in record time, even with a trailer. Um, my other uncle, he lives like 15 minutes 15 minutes away or whatever, 15 20 minutes. He had been there for a while already. Um, neighbors were there and everything. But anyway, so. Uh, my uncles and them helped us get some stuff out of our house. The fire firefighters were really nice. In fact, 
they were really nice they grabbed our fish and stuff out <laughs> my sisters had fish in a fish tank and everything so they actually got them out while they were putting out the fire um, so we carried them down to my grandparents place put them in the garage um, overnight they were fine in fact they're still two of them are, or three of them still living and uh, so my uncles and them helped us get some clothes and stuff out of the house we we went down right away washed them in grandma grandma and grandpa's washer machine um, the sooner you get um, your clothes out if you can and and wash it the better um, that way so the smell don't stay in it as much um, luckily my cousin and at that time I don't remember if they were engaged or not but her now husband they were actually uh, at Walmart and uh, where we live Walmart's 30 minutes away at that time of night there's nobody open well, luckily they were at Walmart and my aunt had called and said hey can you guys Mike you know we just had a house fire and stuff and they're like can you pick up stuff so you know within an hour after the fire or whatever they showed up already with changes of clothes um shampoo toothbrushes everything i mean like they had stuff that we would you never think about that you would need and they had it all i mean they even had food candy oreo cookies chocolate milk for me because i love chocolate milk and my cousin knows that um so we all did we got a grand you know met at grandma and grandpa's house um my uncle we backed the truck up to the basement door and uh Amazingly enough, I'll probably I'll, I'll be showing some pictures and stuff. I'll do a slideshow and maybe a little commentary then at the end of this video um, of the fire, what's inside. But my mom did a lot of scrapbooking and stuff like that. She did. She had a lot of albums and pictures, and she had a fortune in in picture and that scrapbooking stuff, literally. And that was all actually in the basement, right close to my right close to my workbench. But amazingly enough, the way the fire moved, it moved up and didn't spread through the basement that much. So even pictures and stuff that were less than five feet away from the actual fire where it started were actually fairly good. Like five to six feet away were still, I mean, they were singed a little bit um, and stuff like that. And I really appreciate the fire company. They didn't go in there water crazy. They went in and used exactly the amount of water they needed. Um, in fact, they didn't even, they used up the water on the trucks. And if any of you guys know anything about fire trucks and everything, the, the main engine does not carry that much water. Um, they usually have to bring it in with tankers. And they had tankers there, but they didn't even use that water. Um, they just used what was on the two engines. So even though it did a lot of damage, they were able to put it out real easy. Um, the basement was on basically half unfinished. Um, it didn't have a, like insulation or anything down there, so they didn't really have to pull too much of that. It was just basically a brick wall, some drywall, and carpet and stuff. Uh, living room and kitchen area, of course, it got the most, but they were able to get that out. I mean, it was everything was ruined, but you know, it didn't spread very fast. So, luckily, mom's picture. So, we backed the truck up on got all mom's albums and stuff out of there. Um, try to get as much of her pictures and stuff out of there. Took them down to my grandpa's uh, car or shop that he has a shop that he used to work on tractors and stuff. Mm, excuse me, and uh, we we put some put everything in there. We got out what we could that night, you know, a few things that night that we knew we wanted to try to save. Um, so then we uh, went went down and tried to get some sleep that night. By that time, it was like 2 o'clock in the morning, 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning. So everybody got cleared out of there and everything. Fire truck got stuck, so we had to help them pull it out. <laughs> um, my dad and them have a logging business right across the road, so we have big wheel loaders and stuff. Um, so we were able to get them out, everything like that. So this was a Thursday night. We got up next day while well, we slept in next day for a while. Um, Dad and him started talking to the insurance company. My my aunt actually works for the insurance company that we had uh, our insurance claim through. So she was actually up at two o'clock in the morning, logged in, was looking to see what we had, what kind of coverage we had, everything. So she already had a pile of information for us. That was really nice. And uh, we just, you know, continued. We just kind of hung out in my grandparents' place. Um, I went down to my aunt's place with my sisters, my cousins, two of my cousins came down. We watched movies together and stuff. Not much you can really do. Um, so then that night we packed up what we had. Um, we ran some more wash and stuff through trying to get stuff clean. Um, Red Cross uh, supplied us a place to stay um, at a motel for two nights. So we stayed there. Um, so we spent the Friday at, at grandmother's place. Friday night we went to a motel room. Saturday we had a church youth event um, so my sister and I went to that even though we didn't really want to but it was actually a good thing get distraction get us out of the hotel room and then we came back to the hotel stayed there until Sunday 
we had some friends that have a cabin. Well, they called it a cabin. Their cabin is that was actually nicer than our original house, bigger, um, just like three miles down the road from our house. Um, so we called them up and said, "Hey, you had guys using it this week or whatever?" And they said, "No, nobody's going to be using it for about three, four weeks. No, we don't have it rented out. You guys can use it." So we went there, stayed for a while until we got the insurance stuff figured out. Um, so we were there for about three weeks. Well, I think it was Monday. Monday or Tuesday after we moved into the cabin dinner we got a big snowstorm uh, so we couldn't even get out until my uncle came and plowed us out with his snow plow we couldn't even really get out which there wasn't much to do anyways and so from there on it just kind of next couple days was just insurance stuff going getting you know fire marshal had to come out and do his inspection um, they had the insurance company had a private investigator or fire investigator whatever you want to call them come out they had to look into it to make sure it wasn't arson or anything like that um, we dug around the basement for a while, tried to find pieces of the battery charger, everything, what we could. For evidence, wasn't much there. Um, uh, my corner of the basement was pretty much uh, vaporized. I mean, there was stuff in there that I, I, when we were going through the contents with the insurance guy, I couldn't find. I was like, I know. And he's like, well, just put it down if you knew it was there, whatever. You know, we have to go. So we spent the next, like, four four weeks with the insurance guy going through every room in the house making inventory of what was in there um then putting down prices for it and everything because you got to do that with the insurance company everything in the house was completely um we didn't really try to save anything there was a few things we tried to save and in the end it wasn't worth it clothes don't even worry if you guys ever have a house fire which i hope you don't never try to save once it gets if it, if it was a pretty bad fire don't try to save clothes it's not worth it go to community aid buy it. it's a lot cheaper don't even try to wash them like with big companies or whatever they charge you stupid price when you can go buy it community aid goodwills whatever cheaper walmart walmart's cheap um so we tried to save some stuff there wasn't much i really wanted to save i literally had no attachment everything i really cared about was in the basement anyways so yeah not much saving my room uh we cleaned out my room i didn't really care for anything i threw everything out um it was all black um, the, there was a lot of really heavy black smoke because um, in that bay, of course, you know, you guys, if you know, styrofoam makes a pile of black smoke. And I had literally probably 60 pieces of styrofoam down there from the dollar store. I had computer towers. I had TV screens. And, you know, all that stuff makes a pile of black smoke. Um, 3D printing stuff, all my plastic, you know, probably 20 pounds of filament down there. Um, and it just makes a lot of black smoke. And there was like black film over everything. In fact, I think I got a picture, I may put it up here if I can find it, um, of a table that was in my room. You can see where stuff was sitting on the table, it just, everything was completely black. So we cleaned out the house and everything. Um, insurance company came in and said, hey, we recommend, we're, you know, the insurance company, which I don't know why they do this, but they wanted to rebuild or, or repair it. Um, so they were going to, they would have had to tear like the whole basement, they would have had to pretty much tear off the one whole end of the house. Um, the rest of the house, they would have to tear everything down to bare studs. They'd have to do all the wiring over again. Um, the whole roof would have to be done. All the siding would have to be done. They would have put all new windows in. Literally, the only thing they were keeping were a few, few floor joists and a few walls, um, which they have to seal all that with special sealer to keep the smell and stuff out. And my dad was like, why in the world would you do that? My dad used to build houses for a living back in the day. Um, he used to be contractor, worked with a guy. They built log houses and everything. Dad's like, for the amount you guys are saying it's going to take to re repair it, he says, I can build a new house for that. Um, the insurance company basically said, okay, yeah, whatever. Um, they gave us the amount that we're allowed to spend, and they said, do whatever you want. This is the money. You can do whatever you want with it. So we came in, tore, we cleaned out the house completely by that point. And we tore the house down completely to foundation, and I'll put some pictures and stuff in the end here of that. Um, so we tore the house completely down and uh, basically started from scratch. So we had to clean the basement. The, we had to scrape the basement floor because the carpet had melted onto the concrete. Um, we had to pressure wash it, then we had to paint everything, just the brickwork and everything, um, which was fine. We had to have a structural engineer come in, make sure the brick was fine. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of work. Um, so then we got plans drawn up. We actually decided we were going to add on to the house. So we added four feet out over the front, which again, I'll show you that in the next video clip. And uh, yeah, we just kind of started rebuilding and we're still working on building, as you can see in the uh, video clip I'm going to post after this. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, that's kind of where we're at. We're in the middle of building. Um, 
it's going a little slower than we wanted. Uh, we're trying to save some money since we added on. We're trying to use as much of it, as much of the money we can efficiently. Um, the insurance company is paying for a house for us to stay in right now, so we're not really worried about that. Nice house, um, only about three mile, two miles away, three miles from where original house is, so it's still kind of close. In fact, a little closer to work for me. Um, so you may be saying, okay, so what are you going to do from now? Well, I, I think, I'm not sure yet really what's going on. Um, I would like to get back into doing RC and 3D printing. Uh, right now I don't have the space for it. Um, I'm definitely not going to be doing it in the basement anymore. Although, you know, chances of having it again, you know. Although I'm, I'm going to change some things. We have a shed that I'm going to remodel, um, do some fixing up for, you know, get it done and maybe move my stuff out there, which would be nicer because then the base, it's not in the basement. Um, I can do paint out there, stuff like that, because I couldn't do painting in the basement. So I'd have to go outside anyways. So I may just move everything out to my, my little shed. I just want to insulate it and get it climate controlled. Um, so yeah, but it's probably going to be close to Christmas time before, uh, we really October maybe November or so before we get moved back into our house uh, before it's finished and uh, well, I'll keep you guys updated on some of that um, yeah so that's kind of what's gonna what happened there um, one thing guys I would recommend is uh, when charging lipo batteries make sure you keep an eye on them um, from, uh, I'm going to get a metal box to put my batteries in when I charge them that way so if they do blow up they won't go nowhere um, yeah, we'll make some changes. Make sure you have fire extinguisher or stuff like that. So it's always good to be safe. Um, like I said, I don't know whether it was the battery, the charger, or human error. Yeah, I don't know. So, yeah, so that's kind of what's happening. Uh, I just wanted to give you guys an update. I know some of you guys have been asking, and so hopefully this helps you guys out kind of where we're at. Um, some guys were saying online, you know, they're like, hey, do you want us to help raise money for you and everything? That's really kind. Um, you know, it's thoughtful. The insurance company did give us, I mean, we got a good bit. I mean, the insurance company covered all our losses, all our stuff like that. Um, now, granted, some of my electronic and RC stuff, I've been building my collection for 10 plus years. Um, so it's kind of weird, like... I'd like to get back into quadcopters. Well, to get back into quadcopters and build my own. I need soldering iron, solder, heat shrink tubing, you know, all kinds of stuff. You know, it's not like, oh, I can just go out and buy a radio and stuff again. No, I got to buy all my equipment again. Um, and right now I have a truck. I just put a brand new transmission in my truck. I rebuilt one. Uh, so that costs a couple thousand dollars. Um, I'm paying off my truck loan. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of expenses right now. You know, I had to buy a lot of, I had to buy a computer again. And I figured, you know what? I've been messing with slow computers for a while, so I went and just built myself a, a, a gaming rig for video editing, 3D rendering, um, and playing games on, because I like playing video games. So, I, I spent a good bit of money there, um, so that ate into my account a little bit, but I am getting money now from the insurance company that's finally coming to me. Um, my parents are just paying me back. I made a list of what I wanted to pay back for, and uh, so they're just giving me the money, my share of it from the insurance company. Um, I'm not getting everything I got back mainly because they, my dad said like anything I bought within the last year, um, he'll give it back, which I'm completely fine with that. Most of my big stuff, I bought 3d printer, um, quadcopter, uh, anything like that was within the last year. My GoPro, he gave me some, even though I had that for a couple years. So yeah, that, that's kind of, so I, you know, there's, like I said, I had 10 years of collection of stuff. It's, there's a lot of stuff down there. Um, so yeah, it's gonna take me a while to get back up. Like I said, I'm not really interested in starting collecting it until I get my shed done and everything like that. But yeah, so I'll keep you guys updated. I'm gonna go ahead and roll the clip that I made earlier. Um, a little bit of the tour of the house, the outside of the house. I didn't do a video in the basement mainly because there's no lights down there yet and it's completely dark so you couldn't see anything anyways. And there's nothing down there, it's just one big open room. Um, I'll maybe do more of that once we get lights and finish it up and everything. So yeah, I hope you enjoy the next part. Sorry I rambled on here so long. There's just a lot of information there, and I figured some of you guys might like it. You know, if you don't like it, skip to the end where the pictures and stuff are. Um, so yeah, I will put a little slideshow, some pictures and stuff of the house, cleaning out, stuff like that, and uh, we'll go from there. So uh, all right, enjoy the rest of the clips. I hope you guys have a good time, and remember, be safe, and uh, don't do what I did, and don't burn your house down. It's not fun, guys. <laughs> so, yeah. 
Alrighty, so this is the front section of the house here. So where that crack is right there, um, over to there, that is where we added the about four foot over the front um, to give us a little bit more room in the house. And then put some nice big windows and stuff in here. Um, I actually haven't been in the house for a few days, so there might be some things that are different in here. So let's go take a look. So this is the front door. We usually didn't use this. As you can see, still getting walls and stuff in. They're putting the electrical wires and boxes in. Um, this is going to be the living room area, and then over there is going to be the kitchen. Uh, the back door, which is what we'll use the most. Um, this is going to come into like a little mudroom porch area. We're going to have like, I think, probably a deep freeze and some stuff. Cl uh, closets for coats and everything. Stuff like that. So, like I said, this is going to be the dining room area, kitchen, living room. Um, if we come over here to the hallway, this is the steps going down to the basement. I'm not going to do any videos in the basement. It's just one big open room and it's really dark. So there's actually no, the camera won't do a very good job. This is going to be a laundry room. We're going to put two washers and one dryer in. This door here will go out back. We're going to have a big clothesline strung up there so we can hang clothes out and save some money on electric. Um, I am running ethernet to the majority of the house. So I have all my ethernet wires coming in here. And that's all going to be terminated and put into a switch and everything up top there. And uh, there's some of the crazy plumbing we had to do to get around everything. So if we continue on here then we have uh, what will probably be like the main public bathroom. Not very big but hey, it'll work. Uh, then that straight back come into my parents room, put a desk there. I ran ethernet and phone to that wall right there and uh, so that's gonna be that they put in a nice big walk-in closet sort of thing um, give them a little more room and then they'll have their own separate shower and bathroom here with everything in it so yeah that should that covers that part um, then this here will be my sister's room and then when I move out she'll probably move to my room and then this will become an office so as you can see, they're still working on running wires and everything. And, uh, we're thinking about putting LED lights in, so we have it wired up for that. So let me go back over here, and we'll go upstairs. Um, so that's where my other sister and my room. Uh, that's where they're gonna, we're going to be. Uh, we put in nice big wide stairs here, so we have plenty of room to get up and down. And uh, put in a high ceiling up here so we can have room to get sofas up around because you, know, you gotta try to stand them one end sometimes and get them up. So, this is gonna be my room. I think it works out to like a 16 by 17, give or take a little bit. We had to move some walls around to fit some things in. Of course, the closet there. And uh, my room, I am setting up so I have plenty of space for things. Um, so I am kind of have the layout of my room, but this wall here is going to be where my computer and stuff goes. So I put in a double electrical box there, and I also ran double Ethernet over here. And I think there's 12 outlets in this room total. I am going to put two more Ethernet right there, just in case I decide to switch my room around a little bit. Um, I like wireless, but I don't really like it because it's slower, and I like my direct Ethernet connection for uploading videos and everything. Um, then I'm gonna have we're gonna have a fan in here, and then I'm also gonna probably put a smart switch in here, so I can turn the lights on and off. And then we also have our own bathroom upstairs here. Um, we are hoping to get a laundry chute in because it goes right down to the laundry room there, but we weren't able to fit it in, so I'm a little sad about that. So we got our own shower bathroom up here sink everything will be up here then then my sister's room her room's about the same size as mine like i said give it take a little bit uh and she actually has a bigger closet which is fine because yeah women need more clothes and shoes and stuff so and again i ran ethernet into her room just in case she wants a computer or a phone or something we can run all that through there and uh 
she has the nice view of the backyard look at all the deer so that's kind of how we laid out our house um, our old house didn't have a second floor and the laundry room and stuff was in the basement so it was a lot more work with mom uh, she has a, a fibromyalgia so it causes her legs and stuff to give out so she kept falling down the stairs and stuff carrying baskets so we decided be better take up a little bit more space upstairs and try to make it a little easier on her um, but yeah so that's kind of the tour of the new house might some of the rooms might be a little smaller than they were before uh, and the living room and kitchen will definitely feel a lot smaller because we don't have cathedral ceiling in it anymore so gonna be a few changes there but yeah, there's not much we can do about it. We just need to get more for rebuilding. We might as well make enough room for all of us. All right, so when the when the fire started, it would have been right down in this corner here below the living room, and there was a couch sitting there, and there was ductwork that came up through there, and that's how it got upstairs, and it burned up the window, and then we had cathedral ceiling, so it went up the cathedral ceiling. Um, where the hallway started, there was a wall that went from... Um, the main floor here the whole way up to the attic so it kept it from spreading but uh, yeah it was it was actually a really slow moving fire luckily um, but yeah so that's kind of how it started so the living room kitchen area really got damaged the rest of the house just had a lot of smoke damage and they had to replace anything everything anyway so all right so I'm gonna take a quick look around the outside of the house so this is the front part of the house there and this one here will be um, sort of the back side or the long end of the house. Right there again is where we put the four foot expansion out over. Uh, put all that. We'll have to replace these doors here because the firefighters had to break it and bust it to get it in. We just have it closed up right now for the water so don't get down there. But we'll have to replace all that then. And go around here some more. Or a big bush there which might be getting pulled out we'll see got this the back side here that's the door going into the laundry room here's the door going into the porch area and up there hiding behind the trees my puppy she doesn't like cameras for some reason every time I get a camera out she hides and won't even come near me probably thinks I'm weird uh, then here's the uh, here's the main door that we'll probably end up be using and again this is the main front side of the house I guess you could call it but so yeah it's gonna be a little different and uh, but hopefully everything works out well and uh, we'll see how it goes from there I'll keep you guys updated on how the construction is going um, I'll do another tour then once we get the whole inside done and everything so let's see here if we can sneak up on some of the kittens here, kitty, kitty, kitties. There's some kitties. Oh, over there, another one. These cats are half tame and half not. My sisters can pick them up. Oh, what do you got down there? Huh? What do you got? What do you got down there? I'm eating something right there. It's like a little rat or something, maybe. I don't know. This bush, bush, bush. Gotta get some weeds. We haven't been really maintaining the weeds and stuff around here much. Um, since we're not here, or at least where I'm not here. And so, but yeah, this is my uh, little outdoor workshop. Uh, I keep some of my big stuff in, but right now we've been storing stuff for the house in here and some of our tools. And hello. So my kind of. Messed up. Got them ice chests for free there. Gonna do something with them. A project in mine eventually. So, yeah. Alrighty, so here's the pictures that I have. Um, so, as you can see, this is uh, as it's happening. And uh, uh, our neighbor was there by that time. I'd mentioned him. There's after they got it out. That's the basement window right right below where it started. 
uh, we had main cathedral ceilings it went across the beams and stuff and uh, so here's my work area um, so this section right here was where the table was that I was sitting on and yeah it didn't did a lot of damage sorry for some of the pictures being blurry it was really really dark down there um, this is a couple days later about a week or two later it's kind of funny but this stuff down here didn't even hardly melt and this stuff here is all melted so a little bit weird and then here's a piece of 3d printed that didn't melt so yeah just interesting little things soldering iron down here I'm standing right where the table was this here I had Hess trucks and everything under there all ruined I'm just gonna go through these if you guys want to pause the videos and stuff and look at it some of these are sort of the same thing I was just taking pictures wherever There's some extra LiPo batteries that I had sitting on my desk. There's my robot. Or self-driving car. That is an action camera there. Again, that action camera is sitting right, right there. And this 3D piece here barely melted. Like the outside was melted a little bit, but it barely melted. So, you know, little weird things like that. Uh, and this is upstairs came up through the floor here um, and there was a sofa sitting here and then this is that big three bay window and this is my room now you can see everything here on the table this wasn't even touched by the fire but just all the smoke and stuff was really thick Just see you can't get that stuff off of anything it just all the black stuff just fuses its way into everything like you can even see where books and stuff are sitting this is the main living room it's again where it came up through we cut a hole in the attic to get all the stuff out of the attic then while we were cleaning out instead of bringing it down the steps Now these are plastic light bulbs and they did kind of melt and made a little cool stretched out thing but yeah and then we worked on tearing it down. In the long run, it was cheaper for us to tear the whole house down than try to repair it, so. Yeah. So this is what was left when we were done tearing it off. We just had the basement left. We had to pressure wash all that off and paint it. Then we added four feet out over the front here to give us more room on the main floor and, and the second floor that we added. Um, Let's see here. That's when it's painted and everything. We put a big beam across. And then 
we started uh, putting the floor on, framing it up. Got the trusses set. This here would be my room up here, and then that's one whole long thing up there. Uh, we have two bedrooms up there now. That's the view from my room. And that's all the pictures I have right now. I'll be doing another update video here in a couple weeks once we start getting some more stuff done. I'll just keep making little progress videos and then edit them all together. So yeah, that's, that's everything I have for the pictures and stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed. Learn your lesson. and Be more safe.